Our first guest this morning uh, is, a, is a congressman that we've grown to, to know, have grown to appreciate, uh, and his, his name is Congressman Ted Budd. Uh, congressman Budd was first elected, he was just elected to his uh, second term in the United States House of Representatives. Ted Budd represents the 13th congressional district that includes parts of the triad and western Piedmont of North Carolina. Congressman Budd sits on the House Financial Services Committee. He is interested and he ran the first time. I remember it well. He talked about reducing regulations that prevent job creation and certainly he has held fast to that in working. Ted, uh, Congressman Budd, is one of the 12 members of our congressional delegation in the House that uh, that I mentioned who received our Friend of Farm Bureau Award during the 115th Congress. We want to thank Congressman Budd for his strong record of supporting Farm Bureau policies. Congressman Budd and his wife Amy Kate and their three children live in Davie County. He holds an MBA from Wake Forest University and a Master's of Leadership from Dallas Theological Seminary. Congressman Budd, we thank you for your service and we welcome you back to our Farm Bureau Convention. Let's give a warm Farm Bureau welcome to the representative from the 13th Congressional District, Ted Budd. Larry, thank you. Thank you again, Linda. I appreciate that. And uh, you mentioned that I live in Davie County. I also get the privilege of representing four additional counties, including uh, this county right here in Guilford. And we've got uh, Rowan, Davidson, Iredell. Anybody from those counties out there? Anybody? I can say yes, absolutely. Well, I've got a great gift for you all. If you all suffered through this recent campaign, I'm giving everybody their TVs back. How about that? All right, there you go. If you're from this area, you know exactly what I mean. So uh, it's good to be back from Washington. I'm heading up there here in about an hour. I'm going to be um, uh, back up there this week and then home this weekend, calling for a little bit of snow. So I'm kind of excited because last week when I got home, I was uh, greeted by a brand new heated cab tractor on the farm. So I'm really excited. Maybe I'll get to push a little snow this weekend and uh, stay warm because a little bit of frostbite on the, uh, on the old tractor. But uh, we got a great, great friend here, David Rouser, you're going to hear from next. And David has been, been a mentor, a friend. He's been in a few uh, uh, terms of Congress before me. But, you know, it's really important in Washington to get a good night's sleep. And uh, one of the great things I give David credit for is he sold me his Murphy bed when I moved up there. So David was secretly, uh, I think he might have been wondering if I was going to lose this election because he has first right of refusal to buy that thing back. So anyway, David, glad to have you here today. You know, um, we have made a lot of progress in these last 23 months. Uh, we see it in the economy. You can see it driving up and down the interstate. You see, uh, you see a lot of red dirt, a lot of yellow iron on the side of the highway, a lot of projects that we haven't seen. And so we're very excited. We, and one of the things, Larry, you mentioned this, is that I think that deregulation was just as helpful, if not more so, even, than even these tax cuts that we passed just last year. So very, very excited about deregulation. One of the key things that um, affects farms is WOTUS, or Waters of the U.S., and I really don't think, and I imagine my colleague David here, doesn't think that the United States federal government should have jurisdiction over that low wet spot in your field that you don't drive your truck through. All right? Y'all you all agree with that? So one of the ways you can win is not just by overturning things, but by delaying it. So we have push that back and push that back until 2020 and we're going to keep doing it again as long as we can just to uh, to get government out of your way so you can do what you know is right and provide for your families and provide for the rest of the country and uh, and so we're thankful for you all. One of the things that uh, I was proud to support also is the farm bill which we successfully passed out of the House of Representatives. Very glad for that. Now we are. We hope to get this through. It, it is in the Senate. Uh, it, it's been in the conference being negotiated right now between the House and the Senate. Now, w SNAP uh, is a part of this, about 20% or about 80% of this. So when you call it the Farm Bill, everybody would be for that, right? 
but 80% 80 of it is not even directly related to farming. So I think that when somebody gets a government benefit or they get some form of SNAP benefit, that they ought to be able to at least work if they're an able-bodied uh, adult without children. I think we ought to ask a little something of them. Not too much to ask, but for some reason, we got, first of all, from North Carolina, we got great colleagues over in the Senate, but some people don't see eye to eye with us. It's a little more challenging to get those work requirements in there, but we'll see what we can get done. We think we will here pretty soon. Now, I want to give you just a brief update and, uh, on Hurricane Florence relief. Uh, I know I want to give my friend, again, I keep giving him uh, a lot of credit because it's certainly due. Every time I go to a meeting on Hurricane Florence and how it's uh, affected our state, how it's affected our farmers, particularly uh, David Rouser's district. And anytime I'm at a meeting, he is always there first and front and center and leading the way for our state. I know he's working with our governor, finding different ways that the state and, uh, and federal authorities can work together on this. We work with the Department of Ag, we work with FEMA on this, um, and uh, work with Governor Cooper. So again, we look forward to uh, continuing to help on that. Uh, one of the things that's very exciting is the modernized NAFTA. And the USMCA, particularly in the district I represent, we've got a lot of dairy farmers in Iredell County, and we know that we have opened up markets now to Canada. Uh, so the new dairy pricing uh, removes a lot of uh, restrictions that Canada was putting on us. So we think that will increase some of the demand here in the US for dairy. Also chicken and poultry farmers will have greater access to the Canadian market. So pretty, pretty excited about that. Um, now you all know about our president and you've heard that he tweets, right? Y'all heard that he has this, you know about the, the, the Twitter, right? So let me read a little bit what he said about 25 hours ago. It was at 8.01 yesterday morning. And uh, this has to do with trade, not particularly NAFTA. But he said, farmers will be a very big and fast beneficiary of our deal with China. They intend to start purchasing agricultural product immediately. We make the finest and cleanest product in the world and that is what China wants. Farmers, I love you. So I wanna echo his words and say that I love you too. I'm grateful for each and every one of you. I wanna thank you all for having me here today and I wanna wish you all a Merry Christmas. Thank you.